Hello and welcome to UNSW in the Spotlight. Today we're going to be talking about physics. My name's Felix Lempria and I'm a fourth year Bachelor of Advanced Science student studying physics and mathematics as well as a Bachelor of Computer Science in a dual degree. And with me today is Kate. Hi, I'm Kate Jackson and I'm a lecturer and the Deputy First Year Director at the School of Physics. So jumping right into things, if I'm a student interested in studying physics, what options are available to me at UNSW? It's a good question. Um, there are lots of ways that you can get into studying physics. Now, the way to study physics is to do so via a Bachelor of Science. So there are a couple of options that you can do. You can uh, study a Bachelor of Science and majoring in physics, or you can study a Bachelor of Advanced Science majoring in Advanced Physics. And so these are all singular, what we call single degrees. Uh, there are a couple of other single degrees where you can major in physics as well. These are your um, Bachelor of Science and Business and Bachelor of Science International. Um, so yes, they're, they're the single they're the single degrees um, with a bachelor of a bachelor of advanced science with uh, majoring in advanced physics. You also do an honors year, which is really exciting. It's four years as opposed to a bachelor of science, which is three years. So if you're looking at getting into uh, physics research, research, you can. Um, consider doing a Bachelor of Advanced Science. There are also plenty of double degrees uh, if you want to do that, which you can double up with a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Advanced Science. Uh, you can also do a double major if you're really excited about physics and mathematics. You can do um, you can do a Bachelor of Science majoring in both physics and mathematics. So. There are plenty of options for you. You don't have to know which stream of physics you want to get into immediately. Uh, you can you can you can chop and change once you're in. So we really encourage people to uh, to jump in with a Bachelor of Science majoring in physics. And yes, thanks, Kate. That honors year sounds really cool. But what can a student expect for their first year studying physics? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a really good question. So if you're seriously considering studying physics. You would have most likely, likely done physics in high school and what, what, basically in your first year, if you're going to be majoring in physics, you're going to be continuing on from what you did in high school. So we're going to, in terms of content, you're going to be covering the things that you're quite familiar with, things like mechanics and thermal physics and optics, uh, but you'll also be developing the skills that, we, that you would have started developing in high school. So things like your uh, laboratory skills, actually doing experiments and, um, you know, like seeing physics in person. You'll also be looking at your group work skills when you're doing certain classes, especially, especially laboratories. You'll be working with other people um, and you'll also be working on your problem solving skills. So you're working in small groups to solve problems. And these are not only skills that you'll take in your uh, physics degree, um, in your science degree, there are also skills that you'll be um, using once you um, graduate as well. Uh, so now I have a question for you, Felix. Um, you're studying physics. What does a typical day look like for you in your degree? Oh, that's a good question. I don't really think there is too much of a typical day in studying physics or at university. But I think some of the common things that we'll be doing is, of course, on the classroom side, normally I'll have lectures. That's, you know, just with a, another academic kind of teaching you face-to-face -face classroom style. But then also, I'll often be engaged in the laboratory as well in some way. That can be like, as Kate highlighted, in actual classwork, putting into practice the skills that you're learning about in lectures. Or also that's in higher years, I work as a lab demonstrator, which is a really great way to earn some pocket money and also get some practical job experience on the job. But also just one of my favorite things is doing a lot of extracurricular research. So I've bounced around between a few different research groups and it means that normally at least two to three times a week, if I'm not in a classroom lab, I'm in an actual functioning research lab doing cool things like blowing up molecules with lasers. It's not to say that everything in my day is classroom based or science based. A lot of what I do on campus is just hang out with friends, go to a new place to eat. I know probably half the baristas on campus because I just get in really early and always have a coffee. So there's just lots of stuff to do on campus and that's really why I love UNSW and my physics degree. Well, that sounds like there's a lot to love there and I'm totally with you on um, knowing the baristas around campus. But I guess you, 
I don't know how much of what happens in your daily life you knew before you started studying. Um, so why did you actually choose to study physics at UNSW? So uh, it's kind of a fun story really. When I was looking at graduating and going into university, I knew that I wanted to do science or computer science and quantum computing, I think back around when I graduated 2017, that was like a big thing in the news because I think Michelle Simmons who works at UNSW had just been made Australian of the year and she works in quantum computing and it sounded really cool to me as an area that was with physics and computer science and UNSW was really strong so that was kind of what piqued my interest. But really why I decided UNSW was going to things like open day and meeting, talking to students who are actually there and getting on campus and realising that I really liked the kind of atmosphere and feel of the campus, which I think has been really beneficial because uh, I did do some quantum computing stuff and while I like it, I've realised it's not the area of physics I want to go into, but it's all part of the journey. That's very cool. <laughs> so of course the main aim of any degree is getting a job at the end of the day, and while I know that I'm kind of keen to keep going on with research, I know a lot of my friends doing physics are looking at other career opportunities. So what would you say are some of the common career opportunities or not so common career opportunities for people who do study physics? Yeah, thanks Felix. That's, that's a really good question. And really, it's, it is easy to think that once you've finished studying physics that you are only qualified to research physics. And it is very true that you are very qualified to research physics. And if that's what you want to do, we would encourage you to um, try and get into an honours degree and a PhD degree and and that is a way um, to to um, continue researching physics but that like I said there are plenty of other things that you're qualified for you are you gain all of these skills during your during your degree and you can pursue if you don't want to pursue physics for example you can look at going into more broader organizations um, and institutes such as uh, the CSIRO or the Australian Defence Force. You might also look at pursuing um, a, um, a career in a government department, for example. You may sidestep into something like secondary school teaching or um, science communication. You might become a science technician. Uh, and interestingly, a lot of science graduates are hired by the financial sector. So there are plenty of places where um, students can get positions once they've finished um, their science degree after studying physics. Uh, now I have a question for you, Felix, which you've already sort of touched on, that there are plenty of other things to do, plenty of other experiences to be had that are outside of the classroom. What sort of clubs and societies can students join? Um, well, really, basically, if there's a club or society, well, there is a club or society pretty much for any interest that you might have. So I've kind of made it a rule of thumb to get involved with a new society every year. Some of the ones that I've stuck with, though, a long time are the Physics Society, which I'm actually the president of this year, and that's a type of what we call a constituent society. So we essentially exist to provide opportunities for physics students to meet other physics students, meet potential research supervisors or just find out about possible careers, essentially build up all the soft skills that help support a physics degree. But then on the other hand, there are lots of societies like my other favourite society, the B-grade Film Society, where it's just a group of people who go and essentially enjoy a common hobby. In that, our case, it's horrible B-movies, so movies made by people with a lot more money than actual filmmaking talent. And there's something quite nice about all coming together on campus in the evening, putting on a horrible movie and just laughing at it together. And there's 300 different societies, so if you're not into the B-movie society, there's Latin Dancing Society, there's the Dessert Lovers Society, there's a society for every interest and they really are a great way to meet friends and just learn new things as well. So Felix, you've given us heaps of great advice, but if you could summarise it, what is your one best piece of advice that you could give to students considering studying physics at UNSW? My advice would be just to really give it a go and dive right in, be that if it's joining too many societies or if it's just what I would highly recommend, which is 
going up to your lecturers after lectures, having a conversation, talking to all the other people doing physics, because it's a great way for you to get involved and make new opportunities. When you come to university, there's so many different ways to get involved and do cool things like I do, like blowing up things with lasers, but a lot of the time, you've got to make those opportunities yourself, and it's as simple as just talking to people. So that would be my one real big piece of advice, just throw yourself at it 100%. That's great. Thank you, Felix. And on behalf of Felix, the rest of the UNSW community and myself, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. And we really look forward to seeing you at UNSW soon. Thank you.